I recently made a video about trying to take a conversation from why and turn it into a how conversation. Because there's a lot of splitting hairs here, especially when you're talking about people that tie their opinions to their identities. So this is a big challenge in how to approach this. There is a very thoughtful comment asking for examples. So in this video, I'm going to be going over a couple examples and try to explain the concept of taking a why question into a how question better. Let's get into it. So here's the original why to how video. And this is going to be some additional examples that kind of go further into the topic. Because I didn't really give you any examples in that video. It was more of the concept. So I want to go through that engineers love to tie their opinions to their identities. It's very, very common, unless you're very self-aware as an engineer, to tie your technical opinions and strategies directly to your identity. So you can kind of see quite easily, if you have some emotional intelligence, how someone could get personally offended if you question their idea, right? Because if this person is not paying attention and they will take any, not attack, but any directed energy towards their idea, they will take that as a personal affront. So we have two main things here when we're talking about the why question to start the conversation. So we have, why are we doing this? So why are we doing this activity? And why are we doing it this way? This is the conversation that I want to be discussing here. Why are we doing it this way? So if you have a problem with the entire activity, that's a separate discussion. What I'm trying to get through here is the actual execution layer, we'll say, of the discussion, where you've already decided as a team, this is a thing that needs to get done. And now we're talking about how the team is going to achieve this, okay? So this is the why question I want to attack here. So why are we doing it this way? Well, if you are an experienced engineer or experienced anything technical, and you have a deep level of experience in the particular activity that needs to be undertaken. So let's go through my main example here, which is basically a less experienced person has an idea. They have most of the team on board with this idea. You have a separate idea and you don't have many people on the team on board with your idea. So what we're gonna try to do here with this transition of the, why are we doing it this way to how are we doing this? And when I say, how are we going to do this? It's not that open-ended question. This is where you need to use your expertise and you need to basically see their solution. So see the solution that's put out in front of you and say, wow, that's a great solution. How are we going to solve this? And this is a pitfall that you see coming that they might not see coming. And this gives them an opportunity to either explain to you how they're going to get around the pitfall or if they haven't seen the pitfall, Maybe they have an opportunity to figure that out, or they're going to logic themselves out of their argument and perhaps come over to your side if you have more logically sound ideas for this implementation strategy. So you can see what I'm trying to get across here. You're gonna basically show the pitfalls that you see and let the group or let this person logic themselves in or out of these pitfalls. That's the goal. And doing that in a tactful way, because many engineers, again, tie their opinions to their identities, which is not very helpful when it comes to getting a lot of technical things done and taking on new information. So if you tie your ego into everything, you're not going to be very fun to be around, especially when you're in a brainstorming session. So you want to be open-minded. I like to say I don't have any sacred cows. So there's nothing really that's going to be said to offend me. I also do not really care if my group uses my implementation strategies. I really just want to get things done. So at the core here, you're taking this why question and you're turning it into a how question. And you're not using any negative language when you're doing this. So instead of saying, wow, this was a dumb thing that you brought up. Why are we going to do it this way? You're going to say, interesting solution, or I like your solution. Have you thought of this? And you'll note that I did not say but, because again, this could come off the wrong way. So you want to go along with their thing and then bring up the pitfalls 
in a questioning way. Oh, that sounds like a very good solution. How are we going to do this? And you bring up pitfall, 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 and maybe they have solutions to those pitfalls that you saw. Maybe. Or they don't, and you can logic them over to your side. This is what I'm trying to get across here. And this is definitely a nuanced argument. A lot of these social intelligence topics are very nuanced, and it's something that takes experience, but also you need to just be paying better attention. So if you have people around you that always get very triggered, let's just say, uh, when you will go and attack their implementation strategies and try to pick them apart, that's something where like, okay, you need to really just be asking some how questions, So you gotta let them logic themselves out of those positions they might have contorted themselves into. And this is something that, again, will come with time, but this switching from the why questions to the how questions really lets you bring up pitfalls in an open way that's not accusatory and might help switch things over your way. Or the person might have also thought of that pitfall and had a solution that you didn't see. And now you don't look like a jerk, you're trying to be helpful, you're not being accusatory. You can see there's a lot of nuance here, but this is a very powerful thing if you can do this effectively, especially with particularly prickly engineers, because there's a couple in every organization, and if you have to interact with them frequently, learning a little bit better social kung fu will help you progress in your career. I hope you got some more clarity on this why to how challenging situation. If you're after more IQ content, I got a whole playlist down here. Or if you're ready to be an emotional intelligence rock star, I got an EQ playlist up there. Or you can keep doing what you're doing and getting the results you've been getting. Up to you.